It has begun. At this very moment, our Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy are colliding. Researchers have found the first pieces of the Andromeda Galaxy in our galactic neighborhood. In this video, we explain what this means for us and above all, what it will look like in the night sky, so be sure to stay tuned until the end. Welcome, friends. You don't experience a galaxy collision every day. So that as many people as possible can see it, let's try to get this video 500 likes because then the algorithm will show it to even more people. We are in the Milky Way right now. Our solar system is one of at least 200 billion star systems in the galaxy and is located on the edge. A neighboring galaxy is called Andromeda, which is actually around two and a half million light years away from us and consists of 100 billion star systems with some estimates putting the figure at over a trillion. Given these incredible proportions, the question of whether there is extraterrestrial life anywhere is, in my view, superfluous. It would be a statistical impossibility if the trillions of star systems in Andromeda were all dead and inanimate. Feel free to write me in the comments how you see it, I'd be interested. Well, now we know that we are in the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy is our nearest neighboring galaxy. You could say that now. So they don't collide at all. Clickbait. Of course, I would never engage in clickbait, um, almost never. The collision has actually started. But to understand this, we first have to clarify why the two galaxies are moving towards each other in the first place, because the cosmos as a whole is known to be expanding. So shouldn't all galaxies actually be moving away from each other? And is this cosmic expansion also the explanation for the expansion of the circumference of my stomach? Or is it more due to all the pizza? Well, anyway, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy both belong to the local group, a cluster of galaxies comprising several dozen galaxies, including smaller satellite galaxies orbiting the two larger ones. As in the case of the Milky Way, for example, the Magellanic Clouds. Within such galaxy groups, the gravitational forces between the galaxies can be strong enough to overcome cosmic expansion and cause mutual attraction. The gravitational force between Andromeda and the Milky Way is thus the key to their mutual attraction, as it is strong enough to pull them together, despite the general expansion of space pushing the more distant galaxies away from each other. In other words, gravitational effects at short distances can be more dominant than the expansion of the universe. Which is to our advantage, because otherwise the Earth wouldn't be able to hold us down with its gravity. Although it would be a funny sight if all humans suddenly expanded away from the Earth. Andromeda and the Milky Way are approaching each other at a speed of around 110 kilometers per second. Now a little math test for you, stop the video exactly here. And work out how many kilometers the two galaxies have come closer since the beginning of the video. I'm curious to see who will write the correct solution in the comments. Unfortunately, I was always picking up chalk in math class. In any case, this process of convergence is the result of centuries of gravitational interactions that have influenced the orbits of the galaxies within the local group. The motion of these two galaxies can be measured by observations of their radial velocities, which indicate how fast they are moving relative to us. So that's the basics of galaxy motion, but what about the fact that the collision has already started? The key word is halo. Hello. No, not hello, but halo. Maybe I can see a halo. That's right. Beyond the glowing disks of stars that we can see through telescopes, huge heavy halos of sparsely distributed gas and plasma surround the galaxy. These halos are extremely extensive and extend millions of light years into space. For a long time, it was almost impossible to prove their existence as they emit little radiation and the molecules they contain are very diffuse. Today we know that the vast majority of galaxies are surrounded by these huge gaseous spheres, a bit like a galactic atmosphere. To study the halos, researchers use the light from quasars, extremely bright and distant galactic nuclei that act like cosmic lighthouses because their accretion disks around supermassive black holes shoot jets of energy into space. For the observation of Andromeda, a network of 43 quasars could be used, which lie virtually behind the Andromeda halo from us. Using the Hubble telescope's cosmic origin spectrograph, the scientists analyzed how the ultraviolet light from these quasars is absorbed by Andromeda's gaseous nebula and were thus able to study it. Like when a ray of sunlight falls through the windows of your neighbor's house into your spectral measuring station, allowing you to calculate exactly what the neighbor's windows are made of. Normal neighborly behavior, I would say. And that's how amazing things were discovered. In some directions, the Andromeda halo extends up to 2 million light years away from the galaxy's core. The halo of our Milky Way always extends up to 1 million light years into space. And this enormous expansion means that the halo of Andromeda and the halo of the Milky Way are touching, indicating that the preliminary 
various stages of the collision are already in full swing. So in these mysterious galactic outskirts, huge cosmic nebulae are already merging and perhaps individual stray star systems are also meeting out there. Perhaps there is an alien civilization on a planet far out in the galactic halo that now exists in both the Milky Way and Andromeda. Absolutely possible, alright, but now some of you will say, That's just the stupid halo. It doesn't count. Then I've got something else. In the middle of the Milky Way, not in the halo, but right in the middle of it, there are stars from the Andromeda Galaxy. This was discovered by a team led by Lucas Gulzo from the Institute for Astroparticle Physics at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. These high-velocity stars, also known as hypervelocity stars, or HVS for short, are early messengers of the dynamic interactions between Andromeda and the Milky Way. HVS are stars that are ejected at such a speed that they can overcome the gravitational field of their home galaxy and enter the space between the galaxies. And indeed, some of these stars, which were originally located in Andromeda, have already found their way into the Milky Way. It's like you're taking part in the Paris Marathon, but you're so fast that you accidentally run out of Paris and are suddenly in the New York Marathon field. I really need to come up with better comparisons. But how do you become a high-speed star? Not by apprenticing on Deutsche Bahn's high-speed trains, that's for sure. Instead, the cause is the interaction with the supermassive black holes at the center of both galaxies. If a binary star system gets too close to such a black hole, one star can be captured while the other is catapulted out at high speed. These ejected stars can then move back and forth between the galaxies depending on their speed and the gravitational attraction of the two galaxies. Lucas Gulzo said, only a small number, about 0.08%, can make it into the Milky Way and even less would be measurable. Doesn't sound like much at first, but given the enormous number of star systems, this means that we still have a not inconsiderable number of Milky Way stars in Andromeda and vice versa. If we assume that Andromeda produces just as many high velocity stars as the Milky Way, then Adam Rees estimates that there are between 12 and 3909 Andromeda stars in our cosmic neighborhood today. Perhaps even with planets. Imagine a planet that has changed galaxies over millions and billions of years once existed in the Andromeda Galaxy and is now part of the Milky Way. How incredibly interesting it would be to be able to study such a star system. And let someone else say that astronomy is not exciting. One way to find such high velocity stars would be to look for extremely eccentric stars because such HVS would have a telltale direction and velocity that should point exactly away from Andromeda. For all those who doubted at the beginning, the Milky Way Andromeda collision started directly in two ways. Firstly, the halos are already merging at this very moment. Secondly, Andromeda stars are already in the middle of our galaxy. Absolute madness, if you ask me. As soon as something new happens or we find any telltale stars, I'll let you know immediately. But of course, you can only do that if you follow my channel. I know from the YouTube statistics that over half of the viewers haven't subscribed at all. It's absolutely free. You'll never miss a galactic video again and you'll help me immensely. So everyone keep your fingers crossed with the subscribe button and don't forget to fill up the 500 likes. Thank you very much. Let's broaden our horizons a little more now. What if all this, all the galaxies, the entire cosmos isn't real at all? Maybe space and our reality are just a simulation, a matrix. Sounds absolutely crazy, but frightening evidence has now been found. So take the red pill with me and click on the video below. And if you want to support my work, then as always, take a look at the Astro Shop. Every purchase supports me. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.